guys, Spartan117GW here, and today I'm going to be starting my Q&A uh, episode. So this is episode one, and uh, we're going to be going over a couple different things, uh, mostly your guys' questions um, at the end of the video. Go ahead, you know, if you have questions that you've been dying to get answered, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below. I'm um, going to be trying to be pulling questions for future episodes from previous ones, so it kind of consolidates it and makes it, makes it easier, but I will pull questions from other episodes from time to time. Without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so for the first question, uh, Krog TV asks, what is the red dot sight that I use on a lot of my guns? Uh, they're pretty much uh, reoccurring, essentially. Now, I actually have one of them right here. What it is is the AMP Micro Red Dot with a high-profile riser. Right now, they're dang near impossible to find. Uh, a couple retailers may or may not have them, but most of the big ones have sold them out already. I'm kind of hoping Spartan Imports uh, brings them back. Um, all the optics that were amped before, they're all being distributed by Spartan Imports and they're going to be licensed as Spartan Imports optics in the future. So I'm really hoping this is uh, this comes back. Um, if they do have them, they pretty much sell out dang near instantly. Um, but hopefully they'll be uh, brought back. It's a really solid durable optic. has a kill flash. It actually holds zero. Uh, it doesn't have the best MOA dot, um, but uh, yeah, I have used it on a real steel uh, M4. Actually, my issue M4 when I was at the unit, just messing around with. But um, yeah, the MOA isn't the greatest, but I mean for airsoft, I mean it's never, it's never that bad accurate. It's, it's accurate enough, uh, but it has, you know, it's got a lot of different settings. The brightness is very good, especially if you're in like a desert or just a very high exposure environment. Um, you know, you're still going to be able to see that dot. Um, it's got pretty good battery life, of course. If you happen to leave it on the high setting and you put it back in the bag, it'll probably be dead after a day or two. So yeah, so make sure you conserve your battery life. But that more or less is the optic that I've been using on my guns. All right, so Christian Eckley asks, what rail system and what rail covers am I running on my gun? Now, this is the gun that I've been using, and I will do an episode of the armory on this rifle. I just haven't done it yet. What this essentially is, an arm for ERG Scout. Doesn't look like the stock one, obviously, because I have the uh, prototypes and Turian Arms rail system on here, or the CMR. Very nice, low pro rail system. Obviously, I've mounted a couple different things on it, and there's actually room here for my zoom cam. Uh, but it's a nice, low pro rail system. You know, uh, over the years, I've realized, you know, I only need a few maybe one or two things on the bottom, if that, and a lot of times I don't really mount anything on the sides. So this is nice, and what the, Centur uh, the Centurion Arms uh, rail covers, which I like, they're very uniquely shaped. They have a nice you know, appeal and silhouette to them, but the texture, the golf ball texture is really nice as well. You get a lot of good grip there, and uh, you know, I definitely like how they, uh, you know, kind of fulfill the look of the, uh, the rifle, and particularly the rail system. Overall, that's one of the reasons why I love Centurion Arms. Um, other than that, I mean, I was actually pretty excited when they picked up the license for PTS. And if you don't know a little bit of the history behind Centurion Arms, Centurion Arms is a company made by the guy who built Chris Kyle's sniper rifle. Yeah, and he was actually, uh, you know, got to do a lot of cool things over the years, and, uh, you know, he started this awesome company, and, you know, um, there was two low-profile rails that I was, I was a big fan of, the CMR and the Midwest Industries one. They kind of got a similar silhouette, but of course, like I said, uh, PTS is picking up the CMR, and it definitely is really nice. There's actually a new 9-inch uh, for the real steel world that just uh, came out, um, but uh, hopefully we'll be doing that for PTS, because that would be awesome for CKB guns. But more or less, that is the rail system and uh, the rail panels that I'm using on this gun. All right, so Z Crater uh, 1996 asks, why does the ERG Scout require an 11-1? Uh, well, one of the reasons why it requires it is it has a very, very beefy recoil system. The guy who designed the recoil system for the ERG was from Tokyo Marui. Uh, KWA or Yikai hired that guy, brought him in, and because, you know, like in, to in Tokyo, um, you know, the guns, they shoot at a lower FPS, so the requirements for the parts uh, are not, you know, they're kind of limiting, I guess. So this was kind of like that guy's chance to really push the limits by taking, you know, essentially and of course modifying the Tokyo Recoil system and uh, improving it for greater recoil. I mean, you look at the buffer weight that's in there and it's just like, the counterweight is just like huge compared to the Tokyo Marui one. Um, that's one of the things they built the gun for, per se, and um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why it requires the 11.1. It's just the amount of energy that that recoil system has, uh, you, you're going to get 
Minimal performance with the 7.4 and a 9.6. 11.1 is optimal. 11.120C is very optimal. Right now I have a 15C just because that's what'll fit in the pec box, but a 20C 11.1 LiPo is really what you want to use for the ERG. Uh, what's great is that uh, most companies now, they make a lot of different ones that'll fit in the front handguard, and eventually all the ERGs will be rear wired. But overall, that's the battery that I've been using in the gun. That's why it requires 11.1. Um, and the fact that it was kind of built by the guy who designed the TM uh, recoil shock system speaks a lot to the durability and the, um, you know, just the raw performance of the ERG. Now, Peyton Hastings asks, do I prefer the 416 platform or the RM4 platform? As you can tell, there's quite a few questions that relate to either like an LM4 or RM4 or Mega Arms, something like that. Um, you know, when it comes to different guns, it's kind of depending on what you want to do that day. I mean, their performance, they're similar. Of course, I love the recoil system. The recoil system is great. But you know, every now and then, it's nice to take out an HK platform because it's an HK platform. It's a nice system. Uh, has a very nice, unique silhouette amongst the, um, I could say the AR family of weapons that are out there. Uh, and the 416 kind of obviously has that kind of elite status of being, you know, H and K. Um, and the performance that the VFC and Elite Force guns has is, is really rock solid. It's a pretty rock solid system. Um, overall, you know, like I have my M27, I haven't gotten to feel that as much, and it's obviously a variant of the 416. Uh, but you know, it's a great system. It's got a nice long barrel. Um, you can definitely and easily equip it to be, become more of a support weapons platform. Uh, but, and you know, and the, pretty much the subject matter expert uh, within my circle is Chris Bass from Warfighter, our call sign Hollywood. Um, he ran the M27, which is a, basically a super souped up version of the 416 uh, when he was in the Marine Corps as an 0311. Uh, and you know, from the information I got from him, the 416 based platform, um, is particularly M27, gives you a lot of flexibility. Jack of all trades, you know, you switch from DMR, rifleman support, or you know, light support that kind of thing um, it's flexible and the 416 platform what's great is that they were able to take that base platform and really kind of you know expand the different roles that it has uh, but strictly between a VFC 416 and an ERG RM4 um, it kind of depends on the mood you know they're both really great guns one has a really really unique silhouette and the other has an amazing recoil system it's like choosing the difference between blondes and brunettes and uh, that's with a lot of guns too uh, I just you know, oh which one do you like better it's like you know sometimes I feel like you know going with this one or sometimes I feel like going with this one so it really depends what you feel that day Okay, so Dan31387 asks, why do I run both an AFG and an RFG on some of my rifle setups? Obviously, I don't have enough of those to outfit every single gun. And you know, some guns I just run just a vertical grip. Between the two, I prefer the vertical grip, but um, it is nice to have that flexibility. Um, I'm trying to remember, in Japan, someone had kind of brought the idea up to me and he had that same setup on his gun. I was like, man, that kind of looks kind of cool. Uh, and I've seen a few pictures where, you know, guys in the regiment or the range regiment uh, kind of had that setup. Not everyone really uses it. Uh, the way I kind of describe it is it kind of gives you flexibility. Um, you know, like the Magwell grip, I'll use it every now and then if I, you know, just have one accessory on there. Uh, but it's not really the best for real steel per se, but for airsoft, it kind of doesn't really matter. Uh, but what it does for me is, you know, when I have that nice aggressive grip, I have angle four grip just for those more like uh, when I'm really trying to get the gun to where I want it to be. But, um, you know, the, the vertical grip is nice because I, I usually have it backed up pretty close, but not right up against the magwell. Uh, it just gives me that flexibility because, you know, sometimes when you're just sitting in position for a while or you're pulling security, it's nice to have, you know, a grip that's kind of nice and tight and just hold without holding the mag well particularly. So it's kind of that nice balance between two. Obviously, pounds equals pain and you know, all that different things. So, you know, ounces equals pounds, pounds equals pain. So when you add more stuff on the weapon, overall, it's gonna weigh it down a little more. Typically, if I had a choice just to run either or, I would go with the vertical grip. Uh, I've been running kind of more of a thumb brake kind of grip lately, and it does give you, uh, in my opinion, a little bit more security. I still like the AFG, but just because it's slanted, you know, it's more of a theoretical product. Um, it's, it's slanted so much that sometimes your hand starts to slip so that's why I like the vertical grip because that sucker ain't going anywhere uh, but that's one of the reasons why I run both um, but um, you know it's to whoever you know the shooters needs shooters requirements uh, shooters preference is a good way to put it now this is a question I get asked a lot and I 
you know what? He has asked so much that I really don't feel like answering it a thousand times. So I answer it once and I'll just refer you to this video if you ask it again. Uh, basically, what is the intro music for most of my videos? It's changed over the years, but um, I kind of stick to the, the intro music that I used way back in the day. People, you know, when I took it away, people started asking for it to come back. So I was like, you know what, I'll bring it back. What I like about it is that it's kind of about the right length to kind of get my point across for the intro. You know, you know, Jet's been kind of telling me to go with a shorter intro, but one of the things I like about my intro is that it kind of really shows all the kind of different things that I've gotten to do on the channel and stuff like that. And it's right length and it's catchy and, you know, it's only about like 15, 20 seconds long. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's from the unit, uh, which was a great show about um, CAG, Delta, essentially. I mean, Fort Griffith, Griffith is essentially... Uh, kind of a parody of Fort Bragg, but it was a really great show. Season one was really good. After that, it kind of like wasn't as good anymore, but it was a kind of very interesting look and take on, um, you know, uh, you know, clandestine and tier one operations and stuff like that. But all, other than that, I mean, it's Cadence too. Uh, being from military background, Cadence is kind of catchy. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I use that song. All right, so Psych3000 asks, um, once I put the video of the EPM up, a lot of people were wondering about uh, backwards compatibility with Ranger plates. Short and simple version, yes. They are compatible, as you can see, this one has the standard uh, base plate. This one has the Ranger plate on there. Um, not terribly tricky, the spring on the EPMs is really, like, really, like, stiff. So you really gotta push down really hard to get the base plate off. Once you do that, though, it's pretty easy to uh, slide on any kind of other base plate that you want. Um, but yeah, I believe these will actually go on real PMAGs too, which is actually kind of cool. Overall, that kind of answers that quick uh, question, quick and short. Um, but as you can see, there's the standard one and there is the uh, Ranger plate right there. Alright, so after I posted my Broken Home video, a lot of people were asking, uh, particularly Pinking Gaming, and a couple other people were asking, is it scary to be in the helicopter? You know what? From working in and around aircraft in the military, it kind of wasn't really scary at all. It was just it was just a lot of fun. You know, the, the bird's not doing this. It's just kind of going along at like a set elevation more or less. And, and you know, you're just, you feel kind of like you're part of the aircraft. I guess it's part to say because your momentum and everything is just all, you know, it's like one mass, but it's a lot of fun. It's not really scary. Um, I definitely suggest taking the Hilo ride if you go to Broken Home, any American Milsim event, because it is, it is an absolute blast. Um, for me, it was kind of like kind of being in the military again, uh, just because, I oh, mean, it's just so cool uh, working around aircraft again. But, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. There's nothing be afraid of. Um, it's definitely something you should sign up for if uh, the next American Milsim game that you go to has it. So Kyle John asks, are you a ranger? No. Never have been. Uh, at the moment, probably won't be just because I'm a civilian again, more for the most part. Um, and uh, never claimed to be. Uh, there's, you know, like, uh, I guess Jet put it in a good way. Like when I first kind of came more into the public airsoft scene. There was a lot of confusion about where I came from. To be honest, I kind of actually preferred it that way because at the time, um, last year, when I really kind of got to know Jet, um, I was still in USASOC. And the thing is like, you know, with USASOC, I pretty much just, that's something you really only talk about amongst friends or just you know, for a few people here and there. Um, you know, when people start asking questions, you kind of just tell them because they're, they're asking. Um, but, um, you know, even even like on my Facebook page, I never had it listed or anything like that. Just because like when you were in USASOC, you don't really talk about it too much. It's just the OPSEC thing, you know. I'm um, just the same no matter what. If you're in the army, if you oh, you don't want your family saying oh we're deploying then or now or when because then um, you know bits and pieces of intel kind of get put together and it can be used against you. So that's one of the reasons why you don't do that. But every now and then, like if someone actually asks me, I'll tell them. Like I won't, I'm not gonna lie to them. Like yeah, I was in USASOC for two years. Um, you know, prior to that, I was with the 82nd Airborne First Brigade Combat Team from 2008 to 2010. After that, I went to Japan for two years, which is great because I actually got to play airsoft with and against the uh, Japanese uh, Army, uh, Japanese Ground Self Defense Force (JGSDF). Uh, and then after that, uh, I went back to Bragg because. People like to call Bragg like a black hole. If you're airborne, you're always gonna go back there. It's just kind of the thing. Well, luckily though, for me, I uh, ended up going to use the SOC, so it was a much more freeing, a little bit more liberating, uh, you know, kind of can do more things per se. I even got armor certified on the FN SCAR for crying out loud. They're like, you like guns, you wanna go? And I was like, yes. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, and you can actually see the flash, 112 Signal Battalion, which essentially is a, um, 
special operations communication unit um, that supports pretty much everybody. Um, so um, that kind of covers that. If you want to know more about the unit, just go look it up on Wikipedia or research. It's got a lot of great history. It's been there uh, with a lot of really high level units throughout the years. Uh, but yeah, I mean, hell, my freaking platoon leader was a freaking Green Beret. I mean, it was, it was pretty awesome to be there and kind of get insight and, you know, just talking to that guy and stuff like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a great place, a uh, great place, especially if you're in the Army and your signal that's the place to be, but there are places that are better, even better than that. So uh, there's definitely a stepping stone, stepping ladder you can uh, you can um, kind of excel. Uh, but yeah, that kind of covers my history more or less. And if you're kind of confused, USASOC is not just like Rangers and Special Forces. I mean, there are obviously some of the key organizations that really kick some ass. But um, I mean, USASOC covers everything. I mean, you know, military intelligence, all kinds of different stuff. Obviously, communications very, very, very important. Um, you know, communicating is probably one of the most important factors of winning a battle. You know, if you don't know where your guys are or where you're at or how to get assets or something, I mean, just just think about like Lone Survivor when they couldn't communicate, they could not get help and what that did. So, I mean, even just being a radio guy or a CAG RTO or something like that, that's a big deal. Um, you know, and just like, just getting the computers working, man. I mean, sometimes, you know, you'd be surprised what kind of morale boost that is, you know, to guys in the field just be able to talk to their families. Um, you know, because the unit that I was with, I mean, the guys that we're supporting, there's not really like an MWR there. It's not like on a big fob. It's like freaking out there. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that kind of covers it. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to ask more questions about that or anything military related, uh, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability, but go ahead and answer those in the comments below. All right, so the last question. There's a lot of, I guess people are kind of confused um, about what I do now, now that I got out. So after I got out of the military and you know, even when I was in the military, you know, PTS had kind of like approached me and uh, you know, eventually I was like, you know what, this is a good opportunity. You know, being a veteran getting out of the military, getting a job is hard, especially if it's outside of like the weapons industry, uh, you know. And you know, people still have that stigma about veterans and stuff like that. So for me, you know, the airsoft industry was very fitting. Obviously, I already had kind of a established kind of rapport with a lot of people. Like, you know, people kind of understood or kind of got what I was about. Um, so, and it was just being in the military in general kind of, you know, helps, you know, with that. And it, just, it gives you kind of a validity, credibility, I guess you're vetted for it, essentially. Uh, but yeah, PTS, what I really liked about them is just the, the organization itself, the company itself, it's, it's based around, you know, like training products, you know, high quality, you know, polymer, you know, and other airsoft accessories. And that's something I really dug. You know, everyone that works at PTS USA is a real steel shooter. They go shooting a lot. So it's, you know, it's, they're not just like, just some random guy off the block that just works there. Like everyone that works there, they're, you know, you got Alex Ko who does, he does his own IR patches. He's a movie special effects guy. He worked on Life of Pi. Man, he were, he did like Incredible Hulk and a whole bunch of different movies too. Uh, and he's an excellent civilian shooter. And then you got um, Jeff Takeda, who's a SWAT guy. He's an active, um, you know, detective now too. Up at Silver Valley PD, really great guy and uh, knows his stuff. And then you got obviously the boss, Andrew Ho, who's been in the industry for a long time and has done a lot of shooting. And then there's myself and, oh, if I forgot to mention, Jeff was also a prior service Marine as well. Obviously me, prior 82nd, um, and you suck. And uh, it was just like, hey, you know, like I love the job <laughs> when I get out of the military. And you know, it works because, you know, it's if you take a veteran who doesn't know about Airsoft and you kind of apply them in there, it's different. Uh, since I already knew about Airsoft and I've been playing for years, it kind of, you know, kind of made sense. The pieces just fit, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and you know, that's how that kind of came about. More, more or less, my role in the company is just kind of you know, reviewing products, kind of getting player feedback, and you know, just getting going out to the field. Now, like when I review products on the page and on the Facebook page, you know, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. And you know, and thing is, I'm only one guy, and the one with one product. If you guys have feedback about it, like with the Rainier Arms charging handle, I love the Rainier Arms charging handle, but of course, I didn't think it was perfect. You know, it had some fitment issues. Um, for some people, some of the the pins that keep the wing nuts in weren't staying in and you know what's great is that you know since i'm kind of more or less embedded in the community like i interact with you guys all the time i play almost every weekend um i get that feedback and i tell the guys back you know at, at you know back overseas like hey this is what you need to fix because it's not working out or it's not 
you know it's breaking or this and that and the other you know you know I want the products to be the best that they can be and you know you know I'm still gonna give them my honest opinion too if I think something sucks or if I think something is like you know broken like to be honest and if something like if it's coming out and it's not up to standard I'll tell them hey send that back fix it get up to standard and then release it so that like it's not like a bad you know bad product of course a lot of the products that are already out there were already as well out there and established before I even started working at the company but I'm always always going to give you my honest opinion and I will be reviewing other guns other products other gear just because I'm an airsofter first you know I love playing airsoft you know PTS doesn't make everything you know if I want AHK you got elite force guns if you want uh, you know certain guns like the Evo action sports games got that and you know I you know I work a lot with the guys in the industry too and uh, you know it's just one of those things like I work for PTS but I still kind of maintain a little bit of independence with the channel to kind of do what I want and you know like I said just, I've, I mean I have so many different guns if I could if only if I only use just just PTS guns um, you know I would kind of would kind of have a little closed mindedness of you know how the gun performs in terms of to everything else and just you know plus I have a huge collection I'd like to use the guns that are in my collection um, but yeah that kind of more or less answers that question but uh more or less, that is the first episode of the Q&A. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be trying to pull the questions from this episode for the next one. So if you have a question to ask, this is the place to comment. Uh, I'll pull them from other videos too, but mostly from this video. Uh, so basically, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you have another question for next time, go ahead and post it, and I'll try my best to answer it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. So hopefully this is a more recurring thing, but I'll try to do this at least once a week, maybe once every other week. But uh, yeah. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Spartan 117 GW. Peace. Spartan 117 GW. Yeah, make sure you guys check it out. Thanks for watching. Elite Force BBs, that's what's in my mag. Thanks for watching.